Hi, this is Gene Bosler. I'm in Pearland, Texas. I hope it's not too windy. Pearland, Texas. On a fairly new home. And this is like any other soil probe I show you guys, almost. Two inches of good quality soil. Almost exactly two inches. And then we're straight into the gumbo. I mean, we're talking... This is the kind of clay you can sculpt with. It's super wet because the property is irrigated. It's devoid of nutrient content, maybe some iron, count for the rusty color. There's no porosity, no fibrous roots, no nothing. Okay. I was originally called out because of the galls which are caused by cinepid wasps but I also noticed the bagworms see that bagworm on live oak I see them on live oak fairly frequently here's one right here in front this one and this one now I'm not sure what this red stuff is I wonder if it's a sort of lichen I'm not familiar with this There is lichen already on this trunk. There's a ladybug. The ladybugs are, are pupating all over my <laughs> all over my fence at the house. This red stuff is almost non-existent on the sunny side of the tree. Other problems with these trees include white flies, taffrina, leaf blister, leaf skeletonizer. Um, there's probably mites, but I didn't see any. And uh, general malaise. Property. Oh, there's another uh, another uh, bagworm on the decorative barrel. So I want to point out this leads to this. Um, this is the dog pile effect. This is everybody comes to town to the party. Uh, let me see if I can show you the leaf blister. I was looking at it a minute ago. These little fuzz balls are from the cinepid wasp. There's white flies buzzing about. There's white fly pupil casings. There's sooty mold. Here's some sooty mold right here. Some skeletonizer damage right here and here. I doubt if that's a soft fly. It might be, could be a soft fly. It might be something else though. Um, you can see that the new foliage is emerging, right? Brand new little tiny stuff, smaller than my fingertip. It's got a little damage on it already, probably from aerified mites. A lot of this stuff wouldn't be happening to this tree if the soil was right. If it wasn't root bound, if it was planted properly, you really want root invigoration to help these trees become established so they've got a good you know, quantity of cubic footage of soil volume and good mass of fibrous feet of roots and good root shoot ratio and a lot less of this. There's fresh sooty mold and there's old sooty mold. Um, uh, fresh honeydew that doesn't have sooty mold on it yet, uh, rather. There's, I'm trying to keep my back to the wind as much as possible. I don't know why I can't find the leaf blister now, but I'm looking for it. The fuzz balls are all over. Now I can't really do anything about that, so I'm not going to deceive the customer into thinking we're treating for that. But uh, these things, I'm not sure these are from the asp, but they're all over the, the landscape. Try to get them into a different light. It's some sort of 
chrysalis or cocoon. I'll show you one that's on this dwarf yo pond that was ate up with asps last year. Homeowner got stung. Here's one right here. I'm not sure that these are related to the asps. This is the same plant that had them on it. These might be the chrysalises or egg masses. I don't know. Focus. Come on. Focus. There we go. Here's another one. They're all over these dwarf yo ponds. They're all over both of these live oaks. So if these are the asps, there aren't any crawling on the tree yet. The asp is a fuzzy stinging caterpillar whom I've encountered in the past. That's a regional name. Here's the Tafrina leaf blister I, re I referred to or I mentioned earlier. Look at that leaf blister. You can get similar damage like that from an aerified mite. But that I believe is Tafrina. And you can see the white flight people casing there. Little black dot with a white margin. Here is a, what I believe to be, but I'm not sure, a, an egg of the beneficial predaceous lace bug. Uh, lace wing, not to be confused with lace bug, which is a pest. This is a, let me pluck this leaf and show you in the sun. This is a, it looks like the head of a pin. It's an egg on the end of a stalk. That's usually a, a, a lace wing. Predaceous both in its uh, larval and adult stage. A lot of problems. So, this is, um, is I take the kitchen sink approach with a young tree like this that's got that poor quality of soil that it's dealing with. Um, and this multiplicity of stress factors acting upon it. You really want to keep as many leaves on the tree for as long of the growing season as possible and so for the live oak that's 11 months 12 months they're they're losing their leaves now and they're in different stages of their molt as you can see compare the two to each other this one's totally lost all of its leaves and this one hasn't lost them yet but they're both in their molt right they're both putting on their new foliage they're just on different schedules. And the idea is to suppress as many of these damaging agents, both fungal and uh, six-legged and eight-legged, eight as possible and address the soil nutrition needs and the soil quality so that premature defoliation doesn't happen after midsummer. That's the, that's the other concern, that's the other challenge that we face. Everything looks great in the spring, but the, uh, the damage happens in the spring, and then the trees begin to defoliate after midsummer. And so this is why we take a preventive approach to help promote a healthy establishment so that these trees don't look like these trees. Oops, sorry. Info at wideworldoftrees.com. Thank you.